Structural Systems, Laszlo Moholinaj. Laszlo Moholinaj was a fascinating artist. Right around the time of photography's prominence as an art form in the 1920s and 30s, he worked tirelessly and endlessly in a variety of mediums to introduce a new vision that was rooted in a technological culture. Some notes to retain. One, what was the new vision? Two, what are photo montages? Three, how was Maholi Naj's new vision different in the United States than from Germany? Four, why does Maholi Naj cut up and rearrange images? This century belongs to light. The illiterate of the future will be the person ignorant of the use of the camera as well as the pen. Moholinage combined film, photography, painting, and typography. He combined all of these mediums with the same style. His work spanned between the fine arts and advertising, and he was cre credited as the creator of the photo montage. The photomontage is a single piece which is composed of many fragmented images. Think of it as a photo collage. These pieces were not always necessarily intended to exist as photographs in final form. But Moholinaj understood that in order for his work to reach a wider audience, they needed to be photographed and reproduced. Hungarian-born Mahalinaj had been an influential teacher at Bauhaus, the legendary school in Germany, where he championed the new vision, utilizing various and dizzying vantage points in his photographic film and graphic design points. You could see him pictured here. Let's see, where is he? Here he is, right over here. You can see him pictured in this image right about here. The title of this image is actually On the Beach at Mood, Social Hygiene, or A Summer Bauhaus Revenue, directed by Shawinsky is Master of the Parasol. The swimming masters and beginners included Musha, Shepper, and Moholinaj. This photograph was taken in 1928. Laza Moholinaj worked during the rise of fascism in the 1930s. During this time, it was decided that there should be no independent media in Germany whatsoever, a true marking of a fascist government. The existing journalists, photographers, writers, film and radio producers, publishers, printers, painters, and poets were conscripted into the propaganda division of the army. Many artists fled and others such as John Hartfield, his pieces pictured here, stuck around creating work to really satirize the regime. Linked to Moholinaj, John Hartfield created photo montages that would target the regime's twisted logic schemes. He felt that instead he could turn his talents to satirizing the growing Nazi power. Like many artists, who used the photo montage uh, technique that Moholinaj championed, Hartfield would not make his own photographs. Instead, he would select the imagery from mass media illustrations or commission them from other photographers. The photo montage is also linked to Dadaism, which was an art movement that really came to life during this time. These photo montages that used existing imagery really came to create conversations and provoke insight into some of the horrors that were happening around these artists. Exposing the real effects of social policies on the ordinary citizen, and in this situation, the Nazis. This gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the functions uh, that the form had in the, and the context in which Moholinaj had been initially exploring photomontages. 
As Moholy-Naj's time was cut short at the Bauhaus, he fled Germany and eventually came to the United States in the late 1930s. In the United States, he founded a new Bauhaus and through some economic uh, struggles and hardships for the funding of the school, it was soon renamed the Institute of Design in Chicago. Many artists, theorit uh, theoreticians, writers, poets did not make it out of Germany during that time, Walter Benjamin in particular did not make it to the United States. He ended up committing suicide uh, in, in Spain upon fear that he would be shipped back to Germany and uh, would be at the hands of persecution by the Nazis. Laszlo Moholy-Nagy brought a new vision to photography. He used perspectives very uniquely. He would say, we can do with the camera what the human eye can't imagine. We need to show people what the camera can do. He was an innovator of abstract photography and a proponent, a proponent to merge industry and art together. Moholy Naji's uh, straight photography was actually not very much within the conventions of straight photography. It was very distinctive, and in the only ways that it could be considered straight photography was in the mechanical or technical sense that the pictures were unmanipulated prints in terms of uh, brush stroke or tone or touch uh, of images that were recorded by the camera. In terms of the perception that the photographs recorded, they were incredibly ambiguous, contrary, and devious. Many of them were abstract structures. In fact, his deep interest in the photogram and the photomontage provided a challenging option to the doctrine of straight photography, which especially in the United States dominated very serious photography. He was one of the most persuasive and effective theoreticians of a concept of art education that grew out of the Bauhaus. Its influences are still felt to this day in design and art. You can see here the variety of mediums that he worked in, and throughout all mediums, the style is very much the same. Maholi worked in film, all kinds of mediums. Moholinaj believed that mass production images made it possible for artists to change perceptions of the world. In fact, he believed in the technology of the medium of photography to do this more so than painting. His work also encompassed various mediums and modes of dissemination, including advertising work, such as the piece you're looking at right now. This image in particular is a photogram. A photogram is created by layering objects of varying opacity and form directly on top of photographic paper. The photographic paper is then exposed to a light source and the resulting forms that you see are representative of varying amounts of light reaching the paper through the objects. In a way, he advocated for a cameraless photography.
Some of the images that you've seen so far were not necessarily intended by Moholy-Nagy to exist as pure photographs, but Moholy-Nagy realized that the photographing of the pieces tended to serve the purpose of wider circulation and documentation of the photo montage. There would be more of a democratic receival of the pieces. His photo montages broke images apart and put them back together. Wanting to sever conventional tropes and easy viewing, he really advocated for a cameraless photography, which was an unusual and incorrect use of the camera. Such as this image. Moholinaj would also employ multiple exposures in his images. So while certain early proponents of photography really believed or categorized Moholinaj's photographs as being straight photography, they quite weren't. It was really the use of a camera was a route to him to something different. The use of a camera was a way to think through something different, really looking at light and form in these images. And what we get to is the light, uh, his light space modulator. Moholinaj also created sculptural pieces by melting plexiglass. He even had a painting fabricated from an industrial company in the early 1920s. Moholinaj really believed in the power of images and he believed in the various means of dissemination of images. He believed that art could work with technology, and he really saw this to be a route or a path to a better humanity. Thank you.